Davo's vlog. It's Davo's vlog. Yes, that's Davo's vlog. See, even Death's a little sensitive. He's, he's, he's stopping to smell the roses. He's got time. He's hanging out. He's sniffing roses. Or is that a petunia? This is Davo. Welcome to my sometimes weekly vlog. Sort of wiki, weekly ish, I guess you could say. This is my 11th one. It's been a dozen now. Not a baker's dozen, that's next week. The vlog has almost hit puberty. It's going to probably become a problem. And then it'll cool out and be something you can be uh, proud of. Probably not my A plan, but my B plan. Just like anything that you create. This week. I've got my rant, kind of a history lesson, and also the creepy kids. Only footage I got this week. Didn't really feel like filming anything else. Sometimes I have weeks like that, weeks like that. Um, this week didn't 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 feel like it. So, some things you should check out if you live in the Des Moines area. Friday. Captured by Robots. You will not be disappointed. It's an incredible show. It's a one-man band with three robots that play drums, guitar, and bass. The whole premise is, is this guy who's, uh, who was in J-Bot, who was in <clears throat> a number of ska and punk bands, um, including Skanking Pickles. Is it Pickles or Pickles? I can't remember. Look it up. You'll know it. Decided that he was done with that. He didn't want to be in bands anymore. He was going to go start his own solo project, but he did want something a little bit different. He didn't want to have to try to cover everything or leave those loose little holes, you know, as far as not having that full band. So he created robots. The problem is, even though he had finally achieved something where he could control the music, is they mutinied. They rebelled. They took, him o they took over, and now he's their slave. Thus, captured by robots. Also on the bill, Skin of Earth, definitely a band you need to check out if you haven't already, especially if you're from Des Moines and you have not seen that band. I don't understand what's wrong with you. That's on Friday, Lefty's Live Music. Tickets are still on sale. I suggest you go buy one and get them at Midwest Ticks. Also, this week on Sunday, Guy Falk Day. I don't know how to feel about Guy Falk. I mean, he wanted to overthrow the government because he felt like he was being oppressed and he was for freedom, supposedly. But at the same time, he also was Catholic and was anti-Protestant. So I don't know exactly which side to sit on on that one. And let's face it, most Americans had no idea who Guy Falk was until V for Vendetta came out. I personally didn't. There won't be any bomb bonfires on Sunday, but there'll definitely be some great music. We have uh, one of my favorite punk bands in the world, one of those bands that wrote kind of the soundtrack to my life. I've been lucky to have that. Feel blessed. The Swing and Utters. Also on the bill, Western Settings. And uh, Darius from The Swing and Utters is doing his solo project. That show, tickets are still on sale for, and that's on Sunday, 5 to 9, all ages, so bring the kids, Lefties Live Music. Uh, this week, only have one band. I think I already said that, but it's Creepy Kids. Um, what I'm going to talk about today, instead of like the usual, like pick a subject and do something, I want to do some history. I've been wanting to do some history. Um, I always say I'm going to get out and go places and do stuff, never get around to it. <clears throat> this morning I had planned on doing it and then it was overcast, nasty, and the couch felt so good. So I didn't go out and do it. Maybe it's motivation problems. Anyway, I've always been a huge fan of history. I don't consider myself an historian. I don't even consider myself an amateur historian. Um, what I am is, a, is somebody who has a passion for history, especially history that I feel connected to. Um, if it comes to music, Anybody who knows me, I've spent way too much time gathering too much information about various forms of music, especially Southern California punk rock, that uh, late 70s, early um, 80s period that I really enjoy. Um, also, the local scene. 
Uh, I actually run a website called the Underground Archives. I'll leave the link down in the notes. It is kind of a user-based database of regional and local bands in their history. Kind of uh, starts in roughly about the 1950s and goes up to present day. So, as a child, I wanted to know what happened here. And I'm reading about all this stuff. I'm reading about U.S. history. I'm reading about the West. You see all these movies about the West with the cowboys, all these adventure films, everything else that really drew me into history. There was nothing. The one time I really went out and looked for it, I remember putting, I was probably 12, 11, putting on my backpack, getting on my BMX bike, pedaling to the local library, going through the card catalog, finding it, and finding a very thin pamphlet about the history of Des Moines. It was written by an editor of one of the local newspapers. Uh, I believe he was a second generation. I think his parents were founding pioneers. <clears throat> it was interesting. A lot of things I learned from that. The one thing that always comes up with Des Moines, especially because I encounter a lot of people that don't live here or aren't from here, everybody always asks, what, what does the name mean? First off, the S's are silent. Nobody knows why they are. I've never seen anything that says, well, yeah, the S's have always been silent. It's just something that happened. We tend to take language, especially foreign language, and we adapt it to our own language to try to find out an easy way to say it. It's kind of a game of telephone. It's like schedule and schedule. Aluminium and aluminum. Part of that's Americanized on purpose which I could get into in a whole different blog, maybe someday, talk about that, that history. But no one's sure why it's not Des Moines <laughs> in Des Moines. They always say the French, and yes, it has a French connection. There's no way around that, because this area of the world was controlled by the French, then the Spanish, then the French again, then the United States bought it. But the name predates the Louisiana Purchase by, I believe, roughly about 200 years, there's about, or at least 100, <clears throat> maybe 150. But it's definitely French. That's where the origins come from. From two people, primarily um, a monk by the name of Marquette, and an explorer by the name of Juliet, which is where we get Juliet, Illinois, and a few other things. So, the main thing they were looking for, and their big drive, was to find a route to the Pacific by water. Because let's think about it, it's the 17th century, the fastest means to travel anywhere is by water. So they were trying to figure out if this great western passage existed from the Great Lakes to the Pacific. And if that didn't exist, at least trying to figure out if they could get down to the Gulf of Mexico. So, got some canoes together, got some fellows together, I think four people additionally, and a couple of native guides, and set out against the wishes of most of the people they knew. They considered the area unknown and dangerous, and they were right. Not a lot of settlements had, had formed in that part of the area. Not much was known about it, even by the native people, because there was not that much travel. So they leave the Green Bay area, float down the river. I believe it's the Wisconsin River? can't remember, end up in the Mississippi. I met some of the Illinois tribe further up the coast, and they'd pulled in for one reason or another to rest um, on the western uh, or the eastern border of Iowa, they're on the Mississippi, and noticed footprints on the embankment. 
which was interesting because they hadn't seen any other humans for a couple hundred miles. So Marquette and Juliet told the party to wait, set up camp, and they would be back within 24 hours. And they set off looking for these people that, were, that caused the footprint. They wandered out onto, up the bluffs, onto a huge plain of grass, prairie that stretched on for eternity with small breaks of woodland, which is what Iowa was then. One of the wooded areas, had, they, they noticed smoke, so they, moved, they went there. They were greeted openly and warmly. In fact, I think they were probably pretty shocked to see, this, see these two Europeans strangely dressed, strange looking to them, I'm sure. They'd never seen one before. They invited them into the, into the village, fed them, smoked the peace pipe with them, which uh, they, would, they were given the peace pipe to take with them as kind of a passport further down the river if they encountered any other native people. The people they encountered was part of the Illinois Indians. Now, tribe wasn't called the, it wasn't called the Illinois. We, as Europeans, tended to classify groups based on shared cultural interests more than actual governmental or communal. They asked them at some point during the mill or after what they called the river, which was the Des Moines River. They asked them what the settlement was called, and I'm probably pronouncing this terribly, but Moyunga, which is a term that they use to describe their village and also the river, which is believed to be an Indian word that means road, which would make sense because a river is basically a road. It is the superhighway and was the superhighway well into the 20th century. And we continue to use it as such for transporting goods, not so much passengers anymore. There's an also another theory that they were playing a joke on him. And when he asked who lived upstream further up the river, they responded with a slang term, which meant basically excrement, excrement. <laughs> hey, you got to say it twice, heads. Which I kind of like because that, that's kind of, I, I love the fact that if it's true, it just proves that one thing that all of humanity, regard of, regardless of culture, share is a sense of humor. <laughs> anyway, and, and, and you know, usually at the fun of other people. So they end up staying there, hunting with them, taking in the culture go back to their party a day late. Luckily, they didn't leave, so they must have been having a good time playing cards or whatever they were doing in the free time. I'm guessing that it was like, man, we've been, we've been rowing this canoe for the last three weeks. I need a rest. So they were happy to sit on the bank for an extra day. And uh, the, the whole party ended up staying on, going on some hunting trips and enjoying their, each other's company. They would further go on down all the way to the Arkansas River, where they started to encounter the Spaniards and decided that it was not safe to go any further, uh, thus proving that the Mississippi did go, that you could connect the, the Great Lakes with the Gulf of Mexico. And they were the first people to do that, first people in this part of the country from Europe and the first people to actually do that prove that you could go all the way to the Gulf of Mexico, which is a trade route that's even used today. So they go back home, they send their findings to Europe, and part of what people don't understand is it, most maps, especially governmental maps, were not actually written in place. They were usually sketches with notes, and then they were sent back, collected, usually small pieces of, of various parts, 
anything that was missing, they just kind of, the map makers, map, <laughs> the map makers would then use their imagination and kind of fill in the blanks. So thus, the name of, the mo of this particular river went through various different name changes over a, roughly about a 200 year period until it was settled upon that it was called the Des Moines. There's always been some speculation that it meant of the monks because there was a monk settlement at the mouth of the river down around Keokuk. No proof of that. This predates any white settlement there. Um, there's also been theories that it might have had something to do with the mounds that are throughout the, the state, um, burial mounds and other mounds that were not still to this day a little unsure of what exactly they were for. <clears throat> some of them are in shapes of any of, of various shapes and forms. It might have had some spiritual meaning, but it's lost to time. So then we jump ahead to the mid-1800s and the settlement of Iowa. One of the things that happened was Captain Allen was sent up in, to form a fort or create a fort at the mouth or actually at the uh, meeting of the Raccoon in Des Moines River. He had already been stationed at Des Moines, Fort Des Moines, which was located around Keokuk at the mouth of the Des Moines. Um, moved up there, he immediately named the new fort, Fort Raccoon. The uh, military didn't like that name, thought it was not respectable enough. So they convinced him to change the name to Fort Des Moines. It was Fort Des Moines II for a while. Interesting, though, to me, and this is something I didn't know until just, uh, well, I knew at some point about a couple years ago. It was like, so I could have been from Raccoon, Iowa, or Raccoon City, Iowa. I kind of I kind of like the sound of that. Maybe they should change it to that. At any rate. So the name was shortened when we when the town was incorporated in the 1840s and we got Des Moines. What does it mean? Nobody knows for sure. Um, it's probably a combination between road, mound, settlement, and possibly excrement head. Always wanted to have t-shirts that said, you know, I'm from Des Moines, the land of the excrement heads. <laughs> I bet it would sell. I bet Ray Gun's going to steal it. Anyway, so that covers that. In the future, I hope to go down to where actually the original settlement was of the Fort Des Moines and talk about some of the history that happened there and talk about some of that early history in Des Moines. When I have time, when it's nice enough, I'll go out and do that for you. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. Hope I didn't just pose more questions. I'm sure there's a few people that are going to disagree with me. I'm going to happily say, please comment your, your beliefs. I'll be happy to debate them with you um, and possibly learn something. I love learning things. That's what life's about. If you're not learning anything, you're just not doing anything. So now, last but not least, from Des Moines, Iowa, Punk rock, served up fast and furiously, creepy kids. How are y'all doing? Hey, Brian needs a beer. Let's come and get him a beer. He's a oh, fucking man. lazy asshole. He's holding this whole fucking shit up. I'm having a weird flashback. Fucking prima donna. It's pretty sweet. Grubby Ernie was like the first band I saw, so I'm really fucking excited. Never. I'm trying to keep my hand out of my pocket just to no, keep it out all the time. That's awkward. That's awkward. Oh my. Thank you, James. You, Welcome you, to Amateur you're a Hour. Hey, gentlemen. Uh, Lost all your money. Hey, Josh. How you doing? Hey. How you doing? Shit. Uh, we're, 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 we're the creepy kids. Fog in this. Also, there's a fog machine in this room, and I'm okay.
that's the creepy kids. And here's some more creepy kids. This, this, this song is about Jeez. old people who really can't wrap their heads around things. They, they just feel really grumpy about things. And sometimes you want to punch them in the face. Yell at you at your job. It's just... Fucking dicks. kids gave you two of them they were short and now it's time to say goodbye the party's over hopefully you learned something hopefully you learned about a couple shows that you definitely need to go see hopefully you learned something about the history of of where the name des moines came from maybe you'll think about that the next time somebody asks you because it's an interesting conversation when you start talking to people that know something about it Good conversation starter. Next time you're stuck, you met you met like that that significant other that's really attractive and you're tongue tied. Just say, hey, by the way, did you know where the name Des Moines came from? Might be the icebreaker you need. Makes you look smart and 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 and, and desirable. Or maybe use it at a you know dinner party. People have dinner parties anymore. I can't. I, it's been at least. Maybe I just don't get invited to them. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this time with me. I enjoyed doing it. Keep on watching. If you like to make sure you don't miss anything I post, subscribe. If you would like to see more of my vlogs, click on the vlog playlist down here. If you would like to learn more about who I am, if you don't know already, check out my personal website by clicking up here. If you would like to see more live footage from Lefty's Live Music, some of the bands that play there, click here. Other than that, go out, do something, have fun. It's your life. <laughs>